Fanatic versus Team Liquid. Game one. And the best of ones continue. That's right, Fnatic versus Team Liquid. The TI7 champs are now in the lower bracket in the best of one against a very scary Southeast Asian team in Fnatic. Fogged, what are your thoughts about just being able to see this matchup in just one game? I don't think anybody would have expected this to be down here. Maybe Fnatic, yeah. especially after the group stages they had, they were showing some rough games, but then they also started bringing it back. But this is, this is going to be a bit of a doozy. I don't really know what I'm expecting here. After seeing Liquid as well, some of the group stage games, they were shaky. I'm pretty excited for this one. Blitz, do you feel the same? Do you think that both of these teams have had their shaky moments in the group stage? Yeah, I feel like Fnatic... After they 2 would EG, a lot of people were really hot on them. Uh -huh. And it just turned out during that t uh, that time period, EG was just garbage. <laughs> but they've gotten a lot better since then. Yeah. I don't really know how to rate that win anymore. So do you still hold to your previous prediction? You said you started off the group stage and you told me, Team Liquid, top four team or bottom four team? There is no middle ground. There is no is middle th ground. Is this the bottom four or are they just going to make the run through the lower bracket? Who knows? I think if they win this game, they'll find the confidence and they'll figure it out. That's okay. what I meant by it. Or okay. they just bust here. I don't think that uh, they're going to get middle of the pack. I feel like they're either going to discover a concept here, it's going to get them rolling, and maybe they finish top four, or this is it. They haven't figured it out whatsoever. Uh, none of their losses were a fluke. I mean... It's just a weird position for them to be in, considering they got second at the major, the most mm -hmm. recent major. It looked like they were coming on really strong. It felt like Weeha sort of revitalized them. And now I have no idea where they could end up. And then on the other side, I mean, just think about Fnatic's position. You're in a best of one, and you actually have to match up against Team Liquid. But they're also a team that has a ton of star power. That They can actually win this best of one. How, how far away are they from being actually the favorites against a Team Liquid that has been on shaky ground? I don't think they're very far at all, honestly. I think that Fnatic's a bit of a weird team for me lately just because of they just they just recently switched up, right? So I feel like it's yeah. it's still weird to be looking at them playing like this when they're... Yeah, it's it's just different. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's, still, it's very strange for me just because of their, their dynamic has changed so much with Jabs now playing like the carry and everything, even though I know we've seen them so much in group stages. I don't know. It's, it's just a bit of a weird one for me. So I think they can, but I think it's still going to be really difficult breaking into Liquid because overall, like, they have these, like, their pedigree, right? Just the pedigree of these players is that much more above than Fnatic. Yeah. And it has to say something about the confidence level that you have in your team to be able to have this kind of, uh, like, role switch, right? Like, mm -hmm. it says you're not really happy with the way things are going. Yeah, for sure. What's really weird is that I feel like both teams are pretty similar in the sense that I feel like these are both the most boom or bust teams in the tournament. And the scary part is once you start off in the lower bracket, it's not good to be a boomer bust team. All it takes is one bad day. And the way Fnatic ended, right? That was the last game that they had, Whoa. their fate was definitely in their own hands. They were breaking high ground. Their game was looking great versus VP, right? And then something just happened. Something broke them. So I'm hoping for their sake that that does not transition into any of this. I don't know what kind of problems they had. I saw a couple of them. They were pretty down after losing that one because that was their big decider. So let's see if they can bounce back and liquid. Some of the games, I said, they have moments of brilliance and they have moments of high weakness. I saw Miracle Miracle bleed more than ever in these group stages. He was jumping in and kind of just dying a lot of the times in these games. Yeah. So At TI, what I think really stabilizes a team is knowing that you have a star player that can carry you out of those bad situations. Mm -hmm. You have it in the back of your mind and it's in your back pocket. We have Miracle. Eventually, he will carry us through a few of these games. And we haven't really seen that from Miracle. This is yeah. probably one of the worst tournaments that we've seen him play. Mm -hmm. It feels like he's making more mechanical errors than ever, high amount of deaths. We're not really seeing that sort of star player impact that we've sort of come to expect from him. And then on the Fnatic side, was it that man on screen? Is that the man you're going to be depending on to bring in that star power to actually be your anchor in the team? Is that Abed? I think it's both of these, right? I think it's Abed as well as DJ. I think DJ's kind of been, he's kind of been quiet for me. Where we yeah. used to always look at DJ and be like, man, DJ's going to have some like incredible performance. Kind of, I feel like, Tim's has kind of taken over like the DJ a little bit. Yeah, right? Tim's yeah. is having that like crazy four position shutdown where he's just going crazy transitioning. DJ's been a lot quieter. And I remember, what was it, Manila Major, the, the cheers for DJ were off the chart. This was a, a playmaking support that was able to do so much for you. But unfortunately, Fnatic have not been seeing the same kind of success as you can see through their KDA at the bottom there. One of my favorite moments uh, when I did work with Liquid was at the Manila Major 
uh, whenever they'd flash the camera inside the booths, you yeah. could see them like shouting and yelling after they lost fights. And so I asked after the game, I was like, what were you guys yelling about? Uh, after they played Fnatic in the lower bracket, and they were like, we were chanting DJ, DJ, <laughs> every time he wiped us. Oh, that's nice. That's a good one. Actually. I mean, that's I like that's that. the kind of thing you need to do in these high pressure situations. We saw the biggest clown of all in Dota 2. You had Ice Ice Ice, who was just kind of chilling out. You need somebody to be able to, to calm everyone down, cut down some of the nerves that are eking out on everybody. The one thing about this team is I feel like at times they can almost be too calm across the board. Like you have a guy like Abed who, you know, he doesn't really say too much. No. <laughs> He's not one of those like energizing mids that's going to go out there. He's going to do it with his play. I mean, they need to find the spark right here. I feel like that sometimes when maybe that that might be why they wanted Jabs, why they ended up moving to the one. Because as we know, like Jabs, he might look like this quiet little guy, but he's extremely vocal. Like he's nonstop talking in those games. So maybe that could be a reason why they did end transitioning. Is and oh, did I see that? I hear that oh, yeah. right. That oh, is. I hear uh, that right. Elder Titan first pick for Fnatic and Liquid, almost instantly respond with the Wisp Gyro. Yeah, Wisp Gyro, of course, just a really classic combination. Very strong overall. We saw in the last game alone, Gyro. As a hero independently, I feel like he's really moved up for it for me, but with the Iro, he transitions into a different kind of beast. Ten seconds yeah, I totally agree. And this is what like Liquid used to be. This used to be Liquid's bread and butter. Five, Having the Iro, this is what they... they how they won TI. <laughs> I mean, we said right. the same thing about Alliance, how they were just going for what was their most comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that didn't turn out so well, perhaps because of some interesting twists in the draft. That offlane void and the last big gyrocopter. I like this kind of opener way better. I'm just like going off of like recent memory from the games that I got to see from Liquid when I was casting them during the group stages, and I saw some just some pretty strange drafts coming out. We saw like a last pick Pango into a Death Prophet where he just couldn't have a lane. They're all, like overall their drafts have been a little bit weird for me. Just the unison, like how do they all work so well together? I feel like with this type of opener, it's going to be a lot more natural and a lot easier for them to kind of build a lineup around it. The second pick, Leshrank, this is going to be a squad that has plenty of AoE damage to throw around to try and bring down this Gyro Wisp. It also offers that bit of flexibility that yep. we like to be able to see. We've seen uh, plenty of like these five position Elder Titans. This Leshrank can be core or support. Yeah, DJ had a couple couple four position last right? Yeah. yeah. He had a few throughout the group stages, so for sure. And we saw what Lanam could do with his Leshrank in that previous game. Mm -hmm. It's such a dangerous hero. Uh, has one of the better wave clear abilities in Dota with his ulti. He's so mana efficient at clearing stacks. As a support, he's always going to feel good because he comes equipped with a stun and good team fight. He has a way to tower push. He's sort of the type of hero that does it all. The only thing that really hard counters him is when people start to build either A, a little bit more mobility, or B, BKBs. But even in those situations, he doesn't feel that weak because Edic goes through a lot of that damage too. And he's speedy. He just feels nice to play, right? You're just running around at like 330 movement speed at level one. Just, just feels nice. I mean, I love any support that can wave clear because I'm greedy and I like to last hit creeps, but... Blitz will never be your hard six position that just kind of AFKs behind the carry, ready to save him. He'll never be that guy. Yes, but I will nuke your range creep for you. <laughs> I will for, I'll definitely do that. Secured for it, you, he says. <laughs> Dude, I, was the, I, I love Crystal Maiden as a support for that reason because you can justify doing that. I'm nuking, I'm pressuring and securing the creep, oh, I believe swear. Me, I, I got to play with the Blitz Dota 4 position Crystal Maiden, the most sacked off later of all time where my 4 position gets to jungle at all times. Yeah, I was like two levels higher than you every game. <laughs> <laughs> Fnatic, oh. uh, so we do have this Wish Gyro, right? There are a lot of traditional counters to what the Wish Gyro is. You talk about like, oh, you used to be carrying Morphling all the time, you know, Ancient Apparition to be able to stop the heal. What is the meta counter to these two? I personally like the Spens and the Life Stealers a couple of the times that I've seen, just being able to close on top of him and just bring him down. The Sven, it also provides you like that war cry for your team. So it seems to have started to back away from it a little bit lately, but I do think those can be some of those options. I think we used to always see the Jug as well, but the Jug's kind of a hero that you're not really looking at too often unless you have some type of way to buff it up. Yeah, typically you either want some way to deal with both the heroes at the same time or you want a, the ability to just deal with the whiz. Like way back when we used to see EG run the counter, it was their clinks all the time, just yes. the single target focus onto the IO. Uh, nowadays, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. See, Fnatic, they even take out the... So they're looking at just overall just healing and defensive yeah. supports, taking out the Oracle as well as that Chen. Oracle definitely making sense and yeah, I mean the Chen too, right? This is just... A very comfort pick, and 
I think taking out the two mobility cores, uh, Liquid doing that, is really telltale, right? They have an IO, they're looking for their Tidehunter, you're already like very limited on your disables and your draft. So yeah. taking out those two, definitely a good option for Liquid. You want heroes that will absolutely be punished by a relocate gank and don't have a chance to be able to quickly get out and step. Plus, Ember is one of those heroes, like I said, it deals with both heroes at the same yeah. time. Uh, Slide of Fist Chains is always going to feel good against these guys because you know that if you get one, you're likely getting the other. And Liquid, in response, they're going to take the Tidehunter. I like this hero. I feel like he's an interesting hero in that there used to be so many different lane counters to him, but nowadays a lot of them have been nerfed. You used to see Monkey Kings all the time, which made him nigh unplayable. You used to see Ursas all the time. But nowadays, you don't really see those heroes. So I feel like his laning phase has been enabled a lot more than he used to be. I think the supports too, right? Like Disruptor, we're not seeing that hero picked like almost at all. AA has been reworked a bit, so like the, it used to be like the chilling touch people would pick to deal with the Tidehunter. So yeah, I definitely can agree with that, that he's just, I haven't seen this hero, and I think Tidehunter looks like probably one of the best offlaners now, where I was rating like Centaurs and Mars and stuff really high. Now I've been seeing these teams picking it. The way they rally around it, it's just, I think like Fade even said it in his interview, where he's just like, yeah, we don't really care if our lanes and stuff are going bad. We have this Tidehunter, we have team fight. We'll be able yeah. to take the team fight in those mid-game and later game situations where that's all that matters. You win the team fight, you win the game. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Uh, there are some counters left that are popular. You could have the Slark. That's what we saw Infamous pick against NIP, if you recall in that game, where they absolutely dumpstered that Tidehunter. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about a support that does it. There's Grimstroke, who's a force mode pick, but that is... Highly unlikely to happen anymore. It looks like Fnatic just going to go back to their comfort zone, much like Liquid is doing here. Yeah, I really like Enigma against the Tidehunter just because he doesn't care about the Kraken shell. Yeah. It's similar to the concept of when you pick Disruptor against Tidehunter. He can Kraken off that silence as often as he wants, but it's still going to hit you. Black Hole is a similar position, plus uh, it deals with the IO gyro in the sense that they're always going to stick together, so you're almost always guaranteeing yourself a double, uh, double Black Hole. And with this, there's not too many. Normally, it's like your off lane that's going to provide that like BKB piercing disable that makes sure that the Enigma isn't as much of a threat. Liquid going to have to struggle to find those answers either from their 4-5 or, or maybe their mid. Their lineup is a little bit greedy, though, on the side of Fnatic right now. It is. I'd like to see them have either more guaranteed stuns or easier ways to start fights. And what are you leaning towards right now when it comes to Fnatic this this going to be a 2-3 position, Lesh, with a 5-4 and four Elder Titan and Enigma, respectively. I think that's looking like Abed's Lesh, right? Mm, it could be. It's a pretty good Lesh game so far. Like, there's I'm no thinking. heavy, heavy burst damage on the side of Liquid, plus your natural BKB carrier. You push out the lanes, which I think is one of the better ways to deal with Io Gyro. Always have the lane in their face. So while this Enigma is a really good counter pick to everything Liquid has right now, it does leave Fnatic in a bit of a locked position. Yeah, right now Liquid, they don't have any real way to deal with BKB Enigma, which is always going to be an issue. I'm surprised they went for the Shaman there. I thought they would go for something like the Rubik or the Silencer or something like that, just to be able to prevent that Enigma from getting any type of thing. But I guess they want to be able to have themselves some more way to ta push towers and also to have that extra form of lockdown, because right now they don't have no lockdown. This one provides two. You have your Shackles and your Hex. So I can see catch heroes. a situation where uh, Liquid just own the map by playing the Shaman really quickly. Yeah. And if you mess up one black hole, the game just, that's it. It's yeah. over. This is the lineup that can split push really well. It's right. With all this team fight that's coming in from Fnatic, maybe it's, it's better to avoid all this five manning and just have Wiz Gyro on one side of the map, Shadow Shaman pushing out the other side. Yeah. And this is the type of hero that they needed. They needed some sort of pace setter because I feel like uh, what we just talked about, there is a possibility where Liquid just own the map in yeah. the game really quickly on the back of that. And you have this Enigma that's largely useless. So you take a hero that can sort of set the tempo for your team, Timbersaw. Uh, he can potentially just go one-on-one -on -one against the Tidehunter. You can leave him relatively open at this point. He lanes everywhere pretty well in this game. I think, like you said, too, he's a hero that addresses the IO, right? This is the other one, too. It's playing IO versus Timbersaw can be pretty tough because you are, unfortunately, a strength hero. So you really do get chunked down a lot by that. And this is Fnatic. So Ice Ice Ice, you're ready, like, bells yeah, are ringing exactly. for that what? Ice 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 Timbersaw. Even though it's been some time, he still has played it a couple of times here, right? I think he's played it once or twice. Very few more, like, quintessential hero player combos than Ice yeah. Ice Ice Timbersaw. I actually wouldn't mind seeing uh, the Enigma of this game as your four. Just yep. considering, yep. I think your offlaner has to be a little bit quicker. 
So wait, where are you leading for this timber saw? Are you thinking it's going to be a mid and maybe like a one position or a three position lesh? I mean, there's a lot of options, right? Fnatic, no matter what, they can change things around based off this liquid last bit. Yeah, you could even go something like safe lane timber to one on one against the tide hunter. Yeah. Uh, you allow the Enigma to do the Enigma thing, jungle, hit the side camp, and then you ET plus one to deal with the gyro IO. Uh, gyro IO. I don't even think that's that bad of an option because I think ET actually trades pretty well in that situation. I want them to have a traditional carry though, right? Like, if the game gets to the later stages, if they, were, if they end up with this, sure, they have the BKB black hole and they have all this damage, but they don't have that one to one to be able to actually match up versus Gyro. So I'm wondering what carry they actually want to go for. Like, Lifestealer and. I've seen the Razor Band, so, like, the Lifestealer is sticking up a little bit more for me. There's that match. Just be able to chase out the eye on the Gyro, but. I agree with you, because I feel like even though you have the Enigma for the Ultra Late game, because uh, there is no cancel so far. You do want to see something more reliable in terms of DPS. I'd like some sort of BKB carry that can just frontline for you, hit away. Like initially I was saying like the Sven could still be a possibility, but you were saying like greed, Sven might be a little bit greedy here. Is there anything like Juggernaut or one of those faster carries like Lifestealer yeah. or something? That's the kind of area you're looking for. Yeah, Relatively kind of quick thinking. tempo that can build up. Yeah, I feel like Jug actually plays really well so far in this game. He's good against Tidehunter, doesn't care about the Kraken at all, but Ooh. in fact, they ended up going for the Kunkka, so... So it is going to be... Is that a Core Enigma? I mean, it could be our Lesh ET as the side lane, the Timbersaw 1v1 against Tide, mid Kunkka? Yeah, you could definitely do that. Kunkka I like a lot versus Gyrocopter. I oh, think that's yeah. one of my favorites from even, like, what, two years ago? I think Secret was one of the biggest ones when it was... When Kunkka wasn't being picked too much and Gyro was super popular, they just picked this because the rum. The rum is just so good versus flat, te flat cannon and call down. You can predict it easily. All right, the Necrophos, last pick for Team Liquid. Blitz fogged. Last thoughts about it? Strong Necro versus Kunkka. I think that one's just for the lane. Try to take over him, and this looks like a good group up lineup for Liquid. I think Fnatic's actually going to do it and knock out Liquid. All right, it could happen. Maybe Liquid's going to go out as a bottom four team. We'll have to see. But next, we've got an analyst who's so good, he needed his very own segment. Let's go to Nahaz with the last word. We are back once again here at TI9 with 60 seconds of stats. It's a Liquid game. You know what you're going to get from me. Liquid, this patch, 43 and 20 in games ending before that 35-minute mark. Only 31 and 34 in games that go past that point. But Fnatic has one of the best tempo-controlling heroes in the game right now. Elder Titan in this patch, 20 and 6 prior to the 35-minute mark. A losing record, 21 and 24 in games that go past that point. And a legendary hero matchup as GH puts his 44 and 15 career record on the aisle on the line as Ice 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 is trying to get his 80th career win on Timbersaw 79 and 41 that is 50 more wins than the next closest player for his career the TI7 champions against third place Stockholm major finishers fanatic with everything on the line here are Lyrical and Trent Thank you so much, Nahaz. A lot of tempo controlling, a lot of records going on. Whew. And at the end of the day, it's all coming down to this. A best of one, who is going to move on, who's getting knocked out? I needed the numbers. I haven't got them yet. I'm feeling it. Well, I heard, I heard, I think the, the draft seemed to almost be settling there onto a Fnatic. Yeah. Kind of like, I mean, I would consider that a bit of an upset. I feel like a lot of people started taking uh, Liquid and putting them pretty high up there. And those uh, predictions near the end of the tournament. I mean, how could you not? In? You've got like the story captain. You've got the new player that comes in. You know, he's bringing a fresh new style. They looked amazing at the last majors, but they are coming up against the wall here after a disappointing group stage performance. We'll see if they can take down Fnatic and also if Fnatic have something to say about themselves. Yeah. It's going to be hype one. What it's else can we now. say? We got a black hole. We got a ravage going on. There's yes. going to be stuff, particle effects all over your screen. Let's hop into it, ladies and gentlemen. Lots of team fight, but we might not see it for a little while. We do have a laning stage to get through, and uh, depending on how well that goes for Liquid, perhaps those team fights don't ever materialize for Fnatic because they got the spells, as you were saying. They got themselves the big black hole. They got the Elder Titan set up. They got themselves the boat. I, I guess both teams are really uh, pretty flush in AOE damage here. 
And, you know, not just the AoE damage, it was something that Fog mentioned on the draft panel as well, that rum buff. I think that there was a couple of games last year when we saw the Necrophos, kind of a soft counter having that, that Kunkka there afterwards, because you get all that damage mitigation right up front, which means you sometimes won't be able to get the kill with the Necro ulti. Yeah, very true. A uh, lot of sustain, though, overall on the side of Liquid, right? You always... You know, we talk about these cheesy and cheeky things you can do yeah. with the IO. Uh, speaking of cheeky, cheeky. Uh, Ice Ice, yeah, it's looking for that, uh, that last win. Jeez, that guy just never stops. But uh, we, we've talked about damage reduction before with the IO, and now you kind of have this double heal thing going on, right? The Necrophos and the IO, a bit of a classic. So either through popping the Greaves or just by using the Death Pulse itself, you're going to be healing yourself. You're going to heal the IO. You're going to heal the guy who. Io is playing with, and then you're gonna get the heal amplification as well from the Io to that same person. So this gyrocopter is gonna gain like 700 HP. That's gonna be a, a lot of HP, man. Not gonna lie, that sounds terrifying to play against. The flip side of that though, of course, is that you do have the nice lockdown as well as ridiculous burst damage that Timbersaw brings. Granted, in a little bit of an AoE, uh, and sometimes can be lacking when you need to bring down that one particular target, uh, but that's what the rest of the heroes are there for. So Fnatic mm. gonna look like they get a little bit of an easier lane for Ice Ice Ice, as DJ will deny out the range creep coming in. Yeah, if, if it wasn't easy enough already, right? Getting a that's matchup true. versus the Tidehunter. I don't know if we were gonna get like musical lanes going on here, how much the team's gonna care about it, and uh, how much uh, can the Shadow Shaman do here? Because we know the guy's got a mean right click. Kuro even starting with the Fairy Fire to try and bob it up a little bit higher. And oh, trying to get those Eidolons. Ooh, DJ with the micro. I hear this guy has a very good enigma. It's true, he is a monster. And we'll have to keep our eyes on him. Abed already getting the first range creep tonight. Nicely played there against Weeha. As we said, those Eidolons die in the bottom lane. And up top, the other one we haven't talked about, Jabs playing on the Leshrac. A hero that has really run the gamut as far as positional play goes. He's absolutely everywhere. Yeah, and uh, something that he's uh, comfortable with, I guess, and while well, speaking of being everywhere, so is Jabs, right? I mean, the guy's played mid, the guy will play position one, uh, and the guy was just playing support. So let's track a hero that fits into all those categories. I would hope that he's going to be well-versed in it. Yeah, and you can expect that that's going to be the case. A little CS there for Mr. Kuro. Gets the last hit on the other one as well. Always nice as a support if you can pick some of that up early on. But like you mentioned, something that could become an issue as this goes on is the Timber Saw against the Tide Hunter. This hero so often thought of as the counter for those just melee strength cores, bring down the HP, and you can see he's just getting chunked a little bit. And the problem is, I don't think they have a kill opportunity before level three. Uh, once you hit level three, you get the second point into the reactive armor. The times get pretty tough versus the old Timber, and the Enigma constantly gonna be pulling that lane back if he wants to, or just gaining a ton of gold for himself and fully focusing on his farm like DJ is right now, uh, getting some camps finished out, making sure they respawn, and even helping to control the runes there. As you can see, the Illusion Rune spawning down bottom. And moving over to that spot right. already is well, going to be DJ. Mind Control's got a plan. He says, you know what? I just won't lane. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's yeah, great. This is uh, pretty much what you have to do, right? He's already got the Kraken shell. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, he's got himself a stout shield, so maybe not helping him too much right now. But he's just going to dodge the timber and say, come get me if you want me. And Enigma doesn't want to deal with him. He's gone into the Radiant Jungle, which is also spotted right now by that ward. So this is a pretty great solution right now, as long as Kuro doesn't feed. Okay, so Kuro hangs down bottom, tries to mess with the last hits of Ice Ice Ice. This was a constant hero that we would see do this as well. Yes. Uh, the Shadow Shaman, when it was Darkseer, that was making this exact same play. Yeah, he's got the, the big base damage. So currently at 80, he already has four denies. Very, very nice. Can maybe get a couple of pulls off here as well. So this lane looking like it's probably going to be a wash with every now and then. Uh, Ice 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 maybe losing out on a couple of creeps. We'll see if anybody rotates over from Fnatic to try and disrupt this. But <laughs> oh, he's getting close. He's I better going. move back one more. <laughs> All the way back to the tier three. And uh, you, you can't blame him. That's exactly what he's got to do. My control. Figuring it out. Now. Yeeha gonna eat a stun as well as a couple of tower shots there, but couldn't get the Tidebringer punch off to him either. And so far, so good. You look at Liquid across all the lanes, they're kind of winning it out, but the big wrinkle that's thrown into that is that, of course, DJ on the Enigma constantly farming. Yeah, he is making his move now towards the mid lane as well. Just gonna give a little high five to Weeha as he passes through. Well, hopefully not to any, any uh -huh. farm here. Well, maybe more than a high five. Well, he's gonna make it out of there. Misses a couple of the Eidolons. And Mind Control, just keep it on farming. Already level four now. Haven't really talked that much about top lane as of yet. 
and it is still that gyrocopter against the lash and gyro getting a little bit better of them so far but not by a significant margin no pretty much even up here it looks like uh, fanatic just don't really have a solution uh it you can say it kind of comes down to what uh, Ice 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 can do, right? Because they are trading essentially equally. Ice Ice Ice, uh, he's going for the hard camp, but at the same time, he's also getting denied occasionally from Kuro. So, uh, depending, <laughs> Kuro just really wants these denies. Uh, he should come out on top, right, as the Timbersaw. And then you'd also think that the Timbersaw is going to be the hero that's going to be able to better, uh, like, push oh. that net worth oh, onto DJ. the enemy team. Goes for the very risky courier This, this move. is the this hardest is working crazy. courier you're ever going to see at four minutes. Yeah, they're going to send it around the back way. Hey, he's getting the air miles. That's true. Oh, look out now. Top lane. Jab's already under fire. Jab trying to bring him down, but Miracle not quite able to get that kill. And it's going to be a salve up and the back away. So again, a very passive laning stage so far. Uh, Hobbit does need to be a little bit careful. He's going to salve up since we had just got level six. Bounty runes trading off. It looks like it is two apiece. Yeah, just enough to get GH's bottle now, too. So if this lane was even before, as uh, you can see Miracle's already starting to pull away, shouldn't be the case now. Uh, should give a pretty significant advantage to them. Oh, I see a line drawn here uh, from Dubu saying, go get this guy. <laughs> just directly at the Tidehunter. I mean, Mind Control's just doing whatever the heck he wants, right? Like, this guy is just happy as a clam, hanging down here in the bottom lane. This is way better two, than two, people two, jungling. Like, this him. is significantly better. It's way more gold. All right, everybody is going to start doing this in pubs, and I'm perfectly fine with that. It is very frustrating, though, because how do you, like, what do you do? No. It, if you just waste your own time to do it, like, let's say you even kill the guy. He's not even worth that much, necessarily, and he's going to TP back and probably do it again. No. Or, or he'll have messed up the lane enough that life's good. But here we go. Haste rune, that's a good way to deal with it. Oh, that's a lot of Eidolons that are coming close to going down. But Abed pulls back in the Tide Hunter. The lower matchup is alive and well at this point as they will find that kill on to... Well, okay. He misses the chain, but he gets the kill. Ice 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 takes him down. But in the meantime, it's a lot of pressure on that tier one tower bottom. And finally, a first blood. Six minutes, that's one of the later ones I've seen. Uh-oh. A little bit of a problem as Kuro made the rotation. They didn't quite spot it out. The stomp is going to come a bit too late. So they find a kill now onto Jabs on that lash and going to get the pressure onto the tower afterwards. Yeah, evening things up here. They also have that catapult with them. I don't think they want to give this one up. Knowing that the Timber doesn't want to make that rotation, what can the lash rack do? Can he come back into this? He's thinking about Jabs, it. Jabs, he's not sure. Oh, he's just sitting at his base. Well, he's going to come back now, and they do have the missile onto the Elder Titan. Not a chance for a stomp as of yet, but it looks like the catapult is eventually going to get denied, actually. So, yeah, tons of damage onto that Tier 1 tower top, and not really that much to show for it. If they're not careful, they might end up going down, trying to get the D ward here. That's nice. Fresh ward. Oh, jeez. Dude, just walked into Kuro. He's got back out afterwards. Yeah, in the meantime, Ice Ice is going to get the pressure down bottom. So see if they can trade off these tier one towers one apiece. Although there's a rotation coming in now. It's Weeha moving down to the bottom. The wraparound coming from mind control as well. He does have Ravage available, but it doesn't look like they can really commit for it fully. Top tower goes down. GH getting the last hit on. They're actually going on him now. Looking for the stomp. Is not quite going to connect. And Abed looking for the X play afterwards, but doesn't have that many points oh, on the X. Got aside, they find themselves one. Dubu chasing out Kuro, but they're trying to kill off Miracle. And it looks like they will be able to pull him back in, take him down, and GH the one who gets away. Another solid rotation there from Abed will actually get the kill this time. As Ice 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 isn't there to snag it away from him. And uh, that, that's the hero you want, right? Slow down this gyrocopter. Of course, uh, Weehaw is getting a little, a little rich down bottom. So he's tagging with Ice 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 and DJ, perhaps looking for a scythe on that oh so tantalizing enigma. But they're going to bring down jabs here, too. So two cores here versus the Weehaw Necrophos. You do have to be careful, though. Dive like this in a position where you might get caught and killed. It's going to be a quick one for Weehaw, most likely, as he does go down. Yeah. Very nice rotation. No Ghost Shroud to abuse. Uh, also didn't even have that many wand charges in the first place. So now uh, I believe we're going to get a trade here because it's going to be very difficult to try and uh, de defend this one for Liquid. Now it's just sort of the Timber Saw thing, right? Timber chain forward from Ice Ice Ice, forces them back, take control of the jungle. And easy peasy for Fnatic. 
And it's sort of still bringing up that question of like, is Ooh. there one side that you're favoring a little bit more? I mean, you just got the Midas on the Enigma. I do like that. Uh, I also like that both teams have their supports in the mid lane right now. Just kind of trying to get to that level six a little bit quicker than the Tomes uh, will give you. See if you can get some lane XP while your friends are jungling. You can see Abed's up in the dire jungle, just going through some creeps, waiting for the wave to push in. And Miracle also kind of doing the same here to give some space to their support. It's something that uh, Liquid has always done in the past to try and enable these greedier position fives. Mm. Definitely. Much needed. Abed going to get his dance moves on. So he heads off into the jungle to get some more farm. And as you said, need to get that level six on Curl. One of the downsides of having that Tidehunter off to the side and then just denying is he doesn't get any experience in lane. So it's naturally going to be lower than pretty much everybody else in the game at this point. But meanwhile, Liquid, a little bit fresh and fanciful here with Ice Ice Ice. Steals away the medium camp. They're literally just like jostling for position over who gets to farm off the jungle. <laughs> well, it was a point that was mentioned as well during the uh, the draft was, you know, well, where's the catch? What are the stuns here from Liquid? And suddenly this uh, the Enigma comes out. They don't really address it right away with the support with the BKB piercing. They wind up going back for the Reaper's Scythe, trying to have mm. something to deal with it. Uh, and then just general like low cooldown stuns even to try and handle this Timber Saw. There's not a whole lot to go off. No, you, you really need that Shadow Shaman, but as we've mentioned, it doesn't have the levels to do it as of yet, and certainly doesn't have the farm. He um, does get um, great cast range later on, though. That is one thing that the hero is pretty good at. Um, if the Timbersaw isn't very careful when he's going through these team fights, like just anywhere close, you can get Jackal or Hexed. Yeah. You can see DJ there just adjusting his microphone. Should be ready to get back going again. You see the go call from Abed. Let's get this game underway. Let's play some Dota. Not us. No. Them. That would not be great. <laughs> it's a 10 minute mark. Rune's coming up. Dubu trying to secure this bounty rune off to the side, but should be easily gotten off there. And Fnatic going to pick up three. Yeah, looks that way. Uh oh. Weeha. Down bottom. They're That's all good rotating. First black hole if they want it. He is in some trouble. Malif is down, looking for some body blocks, jabs with the haste rune, and they might not even need it. Although he is healed back up to full, and they're just going to drop the black hole right onto his head. My control trying to move in for the Ravage. Is it going to be enough? Weeha able to get the Reaper Scythe off in time. It does find the kill, but it comes at the cost of his own life. And oh. now, can they pick off jabs? This would be a huge kill for them, and Liquid able to make it happen with the rotation. Reinforcements arrive. Ice and Scythe wasn't even that scared. He still kept hitting creeps. Uh, the missile will send him running, though. So it turns out being a, a two for one there overall. Oh, they return back to Dubu. He's in a little bit of a bad spot. Can they bring him down in time? TP does not finish. GH is the one of all oh, people to get the kill, and now dropping down the wards. There's kills happening all over the freaking place. Abed trying to get the ghost off. Can they get away in time? It doesn't look like it's quick and heaven stick charge as well. Bottling enough to try oh, and run away. The slowdown coming. Abed's actually making it out of there in time. Ice 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 trying to play interrupt as well. Throwing a couple more black cannon shots, and now Ice 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 is the one in trouble. He goes down as well. One by one, save your buddy syndrome. It's not the way to do it. The one thing you don't want versus Liquid is these long, drawn-out fights when the Necros is around, too, just, like, dragging them under the tower. Sure, pop a Death Pulse, keep things going. I got an Io, keeping me nice and healed. And the only reason Nava gets out of there is because Kuro low levels in the Hex and the Shackles, so he's manages to survive, but they do have a pretty good movement speed right now to keep up with that Timber Saw. And so often we talk about the importance of taking down that tier one tower in the mid lane, opening up the rest of the map and really actually shutting it down for Fnatic. But a big win there as they're able to find a couple quick kills for Team Liquid. In the meantime, it does look like Ice 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 is going to try and clear through the ancient stack that was built up. That's probably one of the only ways that this could go really tragic for Lick, uh, Fnatic at this point was if that stack got stolen away, but it yeah. will be able to finish off his hood. Yeah, aside from that, things are still relatively even uh, across the board right now. Not a, um, a real like standout Timbersaw game in terms of like, he's not setting the entire pace of things. And it does hurt when you have a death like that, but he, uh, he tends to wait for that hood, um, especially uh, Abed himself is uh, one of the better Timbersaw players at abusing that, right? Where he would just go for this hood super early on and start planting himself in front of the tier 3s, much like Mind Control was. Absolutely. Vision currently very lax for both teams. Uh, I see some some wards kind of planted now defensively for Liquid. Keep an eye on their own neutrals and uh, potentially stacks as well. But uh, they're flying a little blind up top there. No radar around, so... Dangerous stuff near Fnatic. Yeah, definitely. 
Well, and obviously you can kind of get an idea of where people are at just to based upon where you're moving and whether you see people there or not, where the lanes are pushed out. Um, but always a little bit more comfortable if we can get the vision down. Drums finished off now for the gyrocopter. As we hit this 13 minute mark, Timberstaw still the one who's sort of leading the net worth table. And I think the big hero that's kind of fallen behind has been Jabs on that Leshrac. He, he feels like he's kind of changing the, his importance and right, role right now. It doesn't really feel like a position one. No, I, I would agree with that. They do need him for the, the tower push and everything, but uh, a lot of that damage that you take out of that uh, traditional one roll is going to be uh, helped out here from uh, the Enigma. You can see the lane comparisons here. Io Gyro making a lot happen. A lot of that off to that last rotation uh, and continued team fight that they had. Oh, they're uh, trying to catch Kuro down here. Has a oh. TP. Trying to run. Deep Jabs moving in. Can they get there in time? No, they did. They spotted him. But they turned back around at the last second. So they Kuro had the Yules away too. With I, I really thought they were going to grab him on that one. But yeah, couldn't quite get that vision at the, the right moment for themselves. Now the Liquid are going to try their luck here. With Ice Ice, Ice is on the run, but he's got Vision of Observer Ward, so very unlikely to get caught. He doesn't see the Invis Rune on a Shadow Shaman, though, so that will turn things perhaps into Liquid's favor. Ice playing it very safe, however. Yeah, very much so. And in the meantime, while the pressure is coming from Liquid up in the top lane... Now this is what Lesh does. Down bottom, Lesh doing what he does. Yeah. Yeah. May not be a one in some of the more traditional senses, but he pushes towers like no other at this point in the game. They, uh, they really want this Blink Dagger on DJ before they want to take these fights because, sure, they went for the Necroclose as a way to cancel like the Blink Dagger and the BKB, but, I mean, first off, before the BKB, I mean, you, can saw, you saw they needed to Ravage to cancel. It's mm. still going to be difficult sometimes for Kuro to get the, the proper spacing for it, too. So once the BKB's there, he's just going to Black Hole Weehaw every time. Right. And then they don't have an answer. I mean, that's, that's really the problem in this game. It, it feels like... You need to be playing around the vision of Liquid and not giving an opening there onto Weeha. So otherwise, you're just going to die in the duration of it. You talk about stealing stacks, though, and Weeha is after it right now. It's got like four camps here, all mm. found out, getting those Sadis go uh, procs going. Mm. So meanwhile, towards mid, they were kind of eyeing it up, Fnatic. Jabs was doing the little hide in the trees, get some damage onto the tier one play. Uh, but meantime, it's a smoke up coming from Liquid at GH as well as Miracle, looking for an opening, and they are going to break now. So they realize DJ's in the area, going to get the missile onto him. Doesn't break the TP in time, though. It's not quite going to get there in time. Yeah, TPs are broken in this game right now. Uh, <laughs> for Fnatic. Get a Yule's. <laughs> Very busted. <laughs> going to uh, be getting quite a few of those off themselves. Now we have the Hood and the Vanguard done for Ice Ice Ice. This guy is itching to see some enemy heroes. And I feel like this is sort of a testament to the type of game that we've got going on right now in Dota. Oh. In the best of ones. Look at this. Oh. Smoked up away from the timber saw here. So you've got him tangling with Weeha up top. GH. Probably not expecting a smoke here. They got him. They got Miracle, but the turnaround Ravage is there. On to two. Is it going to be enough damage? It looks like already Jabs need to run away. Abed also is already away from there. And the four person stomp. That might be enough to get them out. Shackles are going to land onto the Elder Titan. And with that, Liquid pick up one. I feel like Fnatic have to feel lucky getting out of that with only one dead. And there's one problem with that strategy, and that's that Ice 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 can't cancel the TP. So yeah. Weeha does also just leave right in front of his face to ensure that nothing will go wrong in that bottom fight. Great Ravage there, by the way. Uh, a little bit of an unorthodox build, I would say, from Tidehunters these days to just go like uh, Medallion Blink, right? right? A Blink this early on the hero, you tend to want more, uh, more auras and everything, but this also comes back to the idea of just Pretty poor catch here, trying to ensure that DJ doesn't take over this game early. And uh, not even worrying so much about the BKB, is just saying, listen, we don't want to get, like, black holes early, we lose two heroes, and suddenly we've lost, like, three towers. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what I was sort of trying to talk about before the last fight broke out. And now there's going to be a fight breakout, so I won't be able to talk about it now either. Um, but the big thing is it feels like oftentimes these best of ones, you end up playing a little bit more passive, waiting until you yep. get that first item, that, like, no rush 15 minutes or so that end up coming out. As they do run into Kuro, and this is looking like a very dead Shadow Shaman. As the stun lands, Miracle moving into position. Are they going to try and fight this? DJ's here as well. Got to be careful. The black hole laid down onto both of them with the boat coming out as well. GH not able to heal him up through that. Jabs getting the walk away. Wards are still down, but Abed chasing. Can't find the torp. Meanwhile, Reaper Scythe kills off Jabs. The Lesh does finally go down. And Abed also in a little bit of trouble. If Mind Control could run him down there, doesn't want to go uphill. 
It feels like Ice is just uh, having a hard time getting involved in these engagements, though. Yeah. Maybe he's getting stuck off the side with the... Uh, I mean, he had 500 damage in that last team fight. Like, you need him carrying right now. This guy's your highest net worth. Well, and much more being involved in getting those defensive items, it feels like. Um, and it is very valuable, you know, picking up the pipe. It's a lot of AOE magical damage and a little bit of physical thrown in there from Liquid. If you get all of those team fight items, there's going to be a huge window here for Fnatic to try and really put the pressure on Liquid. Yeah, it just feels like a Timber Saw who's this far ahead, you would hope that he's been having, he's definitely having a good lane impact, right? right. He's helping to push these side lanes a lot and uh, it is hard for them to shut him down so he can play very aggressively, but he hasn't really been able to help like dominate the game like you would hope a Timber Saw does when he's so far ahead. True enough. 1,000 gold lead right now for Fnatic. So we get closer to the 20-minute mark. And closer to the Aghanim Scepter on Miracle, where that's where any sort of lead for Fnatic is going to start dwindling away uh, towards the side of Liquid. And uh, you don't really have the same farming mechanism coming out on the side of Fnatic. We don't have that, like, double bracer uh, into the Radiance build from the Kunkka, nor do we want it, because I think this is a very fast lineup to try to play. He's yeah. going straight for the BKB after that Spirit Vessel. So kind of helping a, to negate this healing. A very unique build going for the Spirit Vessel first, but it's just is a testament to how important that item is against this draft, whether it's the Necropos, yeah. you know, or the Io, or whoever. I do think, though, that they're looking like they might have some damage issues if Liquid can get over this hump, because you have Weeha going for the potentially the Radiance. He saved up a lot of gold. He isn't committed yet, but it's looking likely. And then you're going to have to jack the Aghanims. He's going to start getting to more and more items after that. And if you've gone for the Spirit Vessel BKB build, Abbott's going to have to wait for like a day list sort of thing, and he's yeah. not going to be farming that fast because he's committed so much into fighting items that if Liquid can just dodge and try and build themselves up, then I, th I think the hump past like 30, 35, 40 minutes, depending on how these tower pushes go, looks very good for Team Liquid. And as you see the 20 minute mark come and go, the bounty runes will be traded off yet again. This time it's Fnatic picking up three to the one of Team Liquid with Ahmed also finding a little invis room, throwing his bottle. Tons of sentries all across the map. You can just see them dotted here and there. And it's still just feeling like it's one of those games where neither side wants to put a foot forward or out of place. I don't blame Liquid. Liquid are farming up a gyrocopter. Yeah. I do think Fnatic are probably, you know, a little, a little itching here. Like, how is there's still a tier one mid and a tier two or a tier one top with a 10k net worth timber saw? To me, that that's a big problem. Yeah. I don't I don't see that as okay. They did get the tier two bottom, sure. They they felt pushing there, and it has uh, positioned Liquid uh, much more like north on this map, which is all very good. But I feel like maybe Fnatic could have more. Yeah. Well, and maybe gonna try and make that move soon. Their lead does continue to grow as they farm up the other side of the jungle and as you said keeping liquid just stuck in this one particular area oh man he's got so many eye lots Whew. that was beautiful yeah Aghanim scepter done for the gyrocopter his farm will continue to accelerate they want ice in the mid lane here they have the sight they have the ravage gotta be careful 20 stacks right now of reactive armor but mind control is there taking it all away with solar crest and the relocate comes in afterwards this guy is going down that's a problem that's a pinata popping right there that's going to go right to Weeha. He's now top of the net worth. And uh, you, you can't be that alone. You know, despite how tanky you are at the Timbersaw, that is one beautiful thing about the Necrophos. Yeah. Right? It, it is always going to cut that effective HP by a, a significant margin. Well, and it's so interesting, too, because oftentimes uh -huh, though. See this, yeah, the split push coming in. This is very good. This is the power of taking that tier two bottom. Sure, they didn't get the top stuff, but this helps you control Roche as the dire team. Uh, threatening a push into the bottom lane like this gives you information that they have to leave the Roche pit. And now finishing off that Crimson Guard as well as a BKB on the Lesh. Maybe this is that timing that Fnatic were looking for where they want to try and just control the whole map uh, and maybe even start to take some solid fights. Because so we got double BKBs, the, all the survivability items for the Timber Saw. Yeah, that timing is coming very soon for Fnatic, right? where they want to make the most out of this Timber Saw, but he's going to get a lot of help. Uh, he's starting to be caught up by his allies, which is exactly what you want at this point, right? Timber Saw doesn't need to keep accelerating that much further, but you're getting to the point where all of these heroes need to connect, make use of their quad net worth and triple BKB options here, and uh, take everything that's left here and deny it all away from Miracle. Much needed. As they pressure through towards mid, Somewhat grouped up again. Maybe go for a smoke play here, possibly. 
I mean, 150 GPM is a lot at this point, 23 minutes in, and you see that recipe in your backpack, and you're like, oh, thank you. Like, I need every little bit I can get. Unfortunately for them, though, they won't find a fight before the Radiance is complete. This Necropost has not given himself anything new for 4,000 gold plus. <laughs> and now he's a whole new beast. He's going to be farming a lot faster. He's going to be doing much more damage in the team fights. Yeah. And helping to uh, effectively remove a little bit of damage from his opponents here. No really super strong right clickers to have to worry about, though. So it's not so much a defensive Radiance in this game or not offering any value in that regard. Weeha is just on another level. He's like body blocking the range creep. I, that, that creep wave was so hey, far hey, away. It creates a potential <laughs> possible situation for a gank, right? Yeah, it's true, I guess. The they... closer it is to your side, the better things look. Meanwhile, Speaking up of top. a game, up top. Oh, that was a BKB. Nope. You don't get to use that one. Kill off that Leshrac. Kuro doesn't even have ether. And he caught him. Daytime. Caught him sleeping on the Leshrac. X, though. Back towards mid. One Radiant thing about it is that it is not a BKB, and they've got control, but the Earth Splitter coming through. The Ravage as well. DJ Black Coin, but is it enough? It's not looking like it. They do end up still not having that Lesh. X, though, onto GH, pulling him back in. Can they find any extra kills? Isis is trying to escape. Got him but again. In the middle of that Timber Chain. This guy is not going anywhere. Isis is tries to run. Can they kill him off afterwards? Oh, a stomp, too. Miracle still chasing, looking for that follow-up. The Torrent is going to be there. Isis gets to the high ground. Jeez. This guy's actually getting away like crazy. The the team play there coming up. First, he gets shackled mid-chain, then he gets hexed. He needed everything he could from uh, the man who is his own idol, Dubu. Comes through with the double saves. Look at that damage, though, from Miracle. He, he is a scary guy already. 3,000 in that last team fight. And uh, DJ was the one who picked up all the gold, though, 400 for himself. So that first black hole with the BKB, it does land onto the Necropose. But you, you hear it. Liquid head into the pit. Not having to worry about the black hole, though not having the Ravage as well. Oh, and Miracle, he's flexing. That's why. Mass BKBs. Now, so many right now across all the heroes. And these team fights feel like they're about to get a little bit weird. Yep. Time to start baiting BKBs out. Who's got it? Who doesn't? There we go. Jump in. Mind control already on top of him. Ice 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 taking a lot of damage, but very maneuverable. The stun is going to connect. The boat's already gone out, but the BKB means it will not connect. And this time, Ice 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 does not get away. Don't. A three-person stomp. Doesn't look like there's any follow-up, though. Came just a hair too late for the save. And uh, I don't think you're going to see much of a contest here. So Roche going down. Dubu. Bro, it's crazy. Doing what he can. He spots him out now, and the Hex, does it go out in time? They don't quite have the range. Got to play it quite safe here. But that stomp will land, and while he slept, he might actually kill off Roche. <laughs> so Roche is going to go down. Miracle picking up the Aegis. Well, Fnatic, uh, that, that very good timing for them is slipping away quite quickly. They need to find some sort of like a quick pick onto the Aegis. Uh, ideally without the black hole, right? I yeah. mean, saw it last game with Alliance and RNG. The ultimate counter to these big cooldowns is the buyback, but you know what's even better? The free buyback that brings you right back in the action of the Aegis. Or just kill everybody. You know, that's the other option. Yeah, okay. This game's gotten all crazy to me, man. I don't know how I feel about it, because you've got still this like quad core thing going on from Fnatic, but the three cores from Liquid just feel like they're that much stronger. And you've got that accentuation of, of strength coming from the IO as well. You got the fear of the IO too, right? Like nowhere is safe on the map. You never know. That is a that is a face on. that inspires a lot of fear. <laughs> that that they might as well just put that as an IO Arcana. I just want his floating face. That would be great. Oh, that's a possibility. Ice is well. going to come down here. Maybe try to bait things out here. Set it up, Robin, DJ. He's got the blink. He's got the BKB. And Miracle, spirit. he's just saying, come on. I got the Aegis. Give me the black hole. I saw the spirit coming back to Dubu over on the side. There's going to be the torrent, the follow-up coming afterwards from GH. Jabs is trying to wrap around. Split. Looking for that combo. They already have the BKB out from the Leshrac as they continue to follow down GH as well as Miracle. If they can kill off the IOB good, but the relocate comes in. Last second black hole up to the north with the boat landing on top of it as well. Is it enough damage? No! The Ravage comes out onto four. They're going to call them all out. DJ's got it. 
than KB. He's still living. The turnaround comes as DJ is there with the black hole. The shackles on the ice ice that's on the side means there's not enough damage to throw in afterwards, though. Ice ice ice, seeing if you can find the secondary kill here on the Miracle. There's going to be the X. They have no thing else I to mean, throw. DJ just TV'd out. He's like, okay, we got it. We got a couple kills. We got the Aegis. Get out. Retreat. And sounds the horn and his allies do just that. I'm gonna call that a pretty nice win there for Fnatic right at the end. They made that fight so chaotic. So many angles coming through. You got Jabs running up the stairs. He's having with Weehaw right there by where the wards are planted. He's popping his BKB. BKB's galore and the team fight recap. It was indeed incredibly messy. Yeah. Well, and that's what happens when you get into these situations where, you know, everybody's super mobile. There's not a lot of like low cooldown control, as we can see this team fight or replay. Oh, right DJ here. right there too. He gets hit by the ravage, but his blink he's just the wait, right? Coming back in there, perfectly in there, just to help clean up that last little bit of a double kill and then into the ages. Very, very well played indeed. Now back to live. We still see about the same net worth oh, disparity that we had before. Gonna run into DJ. Oh, did they not see each other? Wow, Ships that was the close. Night. Okay, yeah. Just, just uh, you know, we cool. Just pretend you farm, I farm, it's fine. Don't tell anybody I'm down here. I don't want to be here anymore. So yeah. He's scanning his way through here. He doesn't have any obs. Gross is on a mission. This guy's crazy. Uh, Shao Shaman, a good uh, split pushing hero. And of course, also one of these heroes that can set up for I re relocates. Like the Bane is the uh, the traditional one and the one that you oh. always tend to think of. But uh, they went for the Shadow Shaman instead this game. Yeah, and you can see DJ doing the smart play, hiding oh. off in the trees, knowing that that's where Kuro might be looking. He's got that cast range talent now too. So he might be thinking about picking up that Aether Lens uh, as soon as he can. It's a tough call between the Aether and the Blink in some games. There's a couple cool little plays you can do by just dropping wards down in the trees and then it fills up all the areas and then it you just spot the enigma. True. Yep. But obviously a high risk, high reward type of play. Zabed thinking about throwing out that torrent and mind control. Jason, they'll secure some bounty runes. Relocate in. They're going crazy. Tubu already down and Ice 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 is just out of there. Another bailout situation here from Fnatic. But they're keeping the gap close. They're not letting this Aghanim's gyrocopter get away from them, which I think is a little bit surprising. Probably speaks to just really DJ, right? I mean, the fact he's got the GPM talent, he's got the Midas, that's what's keeping this net worth close. Perhaps it's a little bit inflated. At the same time, it's hard to overvalue Enigma, of course. When it's DJ, when you make the right plays, and if this guy does get the refresher he's working on, he can single-handedly win a team. It's really insane how strong that spell is when there just isn't really a counter, particularly if you can find Weeha in the midst of a fight. There's nothing else for BKB Black Hole. And he is all in. He spends his last pennies on it. Oh, and a smoke, of course, uh, picked up to, to go with it. Well, on the other side of the map, Liquid. Together is three. They're going to smoke up and look for that relocate gank. Obviously, GH and Miracle sitting very close together, ready to come into the fight at a moment's notice. And well, you gotta be so careful, though. I don't know if they're prepped for this. DJ, double black hole available. Isis Ice has to be really fast here on the Lotus. If Kuro reveals, and uh, yeah, they nice. see him now. The rest of his team is so far away. Oh, he's, he's going right towards them. They move in. Does have that Lotus Orb for the moment. Chase trying to get away. He misses his chains. Oh, Ice Ice Ice, he's in trouble. He's gonna get Hex, he's gonna get Reapered. And he's gonna go down. And the turnaround coming, though. Fnatic, do they really wanna take this fight? This is bold as brass. They want to find this big black hole play, but they don't have their timber saw. He's dead for 100 seconds. Jabs goes forward for Weeha. He already has his BKB. This is looking a little bit testy yeah. right now, Dubu. DJ's pace for his omen. They've already got the sword rewards down as well. Jabs, super low. He's just dead. The Fnatic, they're in a terrible position. They managed to find DJ as well. He goes down. Great call a by Fnatic, Weeha. a death is not an initiation. Yeah. As they find themselves another four dead and Miracle gets the triple. They, I think they feel it slipping away. And they have the same idea as like what their timings are. And they feel like they maybe capitalize on this. And Weeha made that call. He just starts pinging. He sees the Enigma and Mind Control jumps. Just like, I, if we ravage this guy and we catch him in the tree line there, we win this team fight. 32 minutes in, only a 2,000 gold weed. But look at these, no buybacks. They, they fully invested for that fight. Yeah, and Ice Ice was so close. I mean, this guy was 80 gold away from a buyback. Potentially, someone, someone they might have needed, right, if they had any hope of winning that team fight. 
Well, moving up towards the high ground. They don't have wards, but you can see Weeha's willing to go up there without any creeps even. Liquid smelling fierce. Sort of seizing this moment as they move up towards the high ground. They're not stopping. They're going. They want that full tier three. DJ's going to put a little bit of uh, a question mark on this, I would think. Are they really going to go for the racks? This is crazy. I mean, they don't have the Kunkka for 20 more seconds, but they do have that double black hole. And you can see that Lesh is actually TPing yeah, up top already. They're dancing back and forth a little bit here. But yes, indeed, they will commit. And a full lane will go to Liquid. Well, heads up play from them, recognizing that there was just that chance to take the fight. And you can see here, it was set up like they, they wanted to go for that DJ black hole, but mind control found him. Yeah, it is such a risky play, too. If they're trying to take the timber saws down, but I can understand, like, they're trying to get them all clumped up. They think they see their moment. There's no sight. And this is right there as uh, DJ just instantly, like, right there, ping, boom, got him, got him, guys. Get in there. Yeah, see you later, Enigma. Nah, it's so tough. And obviously punished heavily Liquid, a team that you can't afford to make mistakes against. Back in the live game, they almost found him again. But yeah. uh, no worries there, Miracle, yeah. They're feeling themselves. DJ getting caught out there. Pretty much the expected reaction of just like, ah, not find my, my right moment there, guys. All next right. one, next one. Another smoke up. They know that they have all of their abilities yet again. Miracle Whoa. caught a big jump. This could be their moment as well. They follow through already there. The big earth splitter comes through as well. GH super low. Are they need to find right another. Back? Can they get another? Kuro caught again. X torrent. The combination comes out. And this is all without black hole. That ward into the ancient camp. What? Well done to spot for the torrent. I, typically a place you expect there to be a sentry, but there was nothing covering it, so they didn't see it from Liquid. Dubu makes the play, and well, we're, we're there. I mean, this is just like when Isis Ice died. Fnatic look a little stunned. They're kind of running around in circles like, okay, what, what do we do? Where do we push? Where are we going here, guys? Roche respawning again in two seconds. Uh, I mean, they're going to see it, and they're going to go for it. There's no gyrocopter for 35 seconds. I say Sice runs into mind control, going to try and get a little bit testy with them here, see what he can possibly do. But back and forth, the pendulum swings. I think he's going to lose out on both of those bounty runes. Yeah. Well, they know the Roche is up. I believe Dubu was in there like seconds before it spawned. But yeah, you, that ward you're talking yeah, about. Dubu just kind of chilling the tree line and planting that one down to set things up nice and easy for the team. Mm, it's just so much damage so quickly. That's that's part of the reason why these BKBs are so valuable, but also they're not immortality. You, you need to be able to not be stunned to make it work at the beginning. So they've now brought the top lane and the mid lane right uh, to the sides of this plateau. They they put some wards up that they know are going to get dewarded, right? You got an observer and a sentry up on the, pil uh, the pillar here for Fnatic, but they're trying to find some good fight here. Miracle just runs in. Abed's there, DJ ready to jump as well if they want to. Need to be careful though because Isis is not with them. He's TPing over right now because they already go in. Jabs in super deep up against Mind Control. He needs to be careful when his BKB wears off, but it looks like Liquid just want to back out. Kuro caught and going to be killed. Great play there from Jab. Man, Jabs has just been playing solo in these team fights, and it is working. Yeah, he's really abusing his BKB. He, he's kind of reading like if Mare goes on the other side, I'm just gonna try and go mess with the back line, and uh, not the typical like position one stuff you you expect because that's that's not really what this slash rack is doing for them. He I, he's fourth on the net worth right now. Yeah, you know you gotta give some special permissions over to DJ. It definitely feels like DJ is the real carry in this game and has been, needs to be the one to hit those big black holes. And even just the threat of it right there, you can see that Liquid not willing to clump up together to try and take the fight. Always just giving up one kill instead of forcing a really bad engagement. Well, they'll continue to keep these lanes in good stature for themselves here. Miracle forced to drop the call down to try and send them back. We have very aggressively split pushing on the side lanes, but you know, we talked a lot about BKB piercing and everything inside of uh, Liquid, but Fnac, they would require the Black Hole to really deal with this yes. if he wants a BKB TP, or perhaps a Split Earth, I suppose, as well. Sorry, not Split Earth, the Earth Splitter. You know, as, as soon that, as I saw those, I know, mess those up at some yeah, point. Yeah, you knew that was going to happen. <laughs> uh, you know, Split Earth, if that was BKB piercing, now that would be good. That's the buff he needs, right? Leshrac needs more buffs. Yeah, that's, that would be great. <laughs> that would be so balanced. Uh-oh. Mind control again moves forward. The big watermelon daring somebody to go at him. Miracle coming in afterwards. Mind intercept. Ice, ice, ice. 
Also up front and center, now facing off against the Gyrocopter. Everybody waiting for their moment. A Hex is out as well. Does Mind Control decide to jump? Jabs yeah. just runs at him. They are not their lift up. They're so split. They need to be careful though, because there's only one or two ways down from this high ground. And Miracle now, the back lines dropping down very low. Pops the BKB. Good way to force it out. We are able to find the Reaper site to turn this one back around. He's a black hole. It's on to nothing. He didn't hit anything. They've got the refresher, but the, does he have the mana to go back in? He does with their regen rune as well. Yeah, he's got but a look at this. They're running in all over them. The shackles are there as well. DJ wanting to find a black hole, but look at Liquid. They're beautifully split up, and DJ is just going to fall apart. The Ravage comes down afterwards. Liquid running through Fnatic. Weehaw spaced himself away there, too. And uh, DJ felt the pressure to go on to him. There wasn't a sight, but he turned for it anyway. And Liquid, that whole team fight, Liquid are so far apart. They send Miracle up there. The only reason he was forced to BKB was because of that Spirit Vessel. Yeah. Right? He's trying to like stay alive, keep the damage going. But absolutely masterfully done there from Liquid. And that's why they're one of the best teams, because they look at their opponents and they say, how do we lose this fight? What are these guys trying to do? And you know they're fishing for that black hole. So you just don't give it to them. Hide away. Stay to the side. Doesn't matter if the fight looks weird. You have the sustain on this liquid team. I mean, there were moments where they start coming together a little bit, and you could see someone's making this call, like, split, split. And they're just running in like <laughs> random directions in the team fight. That doesn't look like the optimal play, but they understand it's the only way for Fnatic. And you look at these guys, liquid, cool as a cucumber, just going to run forward brazenly and say, deal with me, Fnatic. Right now, they don't have the answers. Kunkka's still dead for 17 seconds at Timbersaw. He's out of action for a minute. So the Tier 3 tower gone. Now looking for the set of racks. And DJ saying, one last ride. Let's see if we can go in there and deal with it. Oh, Liquid's here. The tide has come in. 25 seconds until Black Hole is up. They have the sleep. Gyrocopter not stopped and hitting the towers because of the Aghanim Scepter. And the building's going. Tier 4 towers, they forced the glyph. Fnatic. Knock, knock. They, Hello. They need to have an answer. And Still a couple anybody seconds. Home? 10 seconds until Black Hole. They need to hold on. The Stomp comes out another round. They're losing everything right now, DJ. Hiding back away again, seeing if he can find a good angle. But it needs to be Liquid to give it to him. And it's not looking like it's going to happen. Miracle making particle effects fly all over the freaking world as he's going to get caught out there. Black Hole. One and two. Is it actually enough? Is it? No, they interrupted, but they were able to take Ten down the seconds. Aegis at the very least. It doesn't look like it's quite going to be there. The stall comes out. It wasn't able to time it perfectly. Abed trying desperately to hold on to these racks. They're dropping meteors down from the sky, but Dubu not able to get the stomp off. They jump in another round. Ice 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 trying desperately DJ's to coming. hold on. A triple kill. DJ, can he find his moment? They need to hold on. He jumped forward. The black goal, but he didn't get Miracle. Miracle trying to close out this game. Can they take him down in time? No. The ancient will fall, and with that team